joining me today for Just a Thought. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 11, the third phrase found there is serving the Lord. Now to put it into context, of course, there's quite a few things that are mentioned here beginning in verse 9. And they just kind of stack on top of one another. But in verse 11, it says, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So in other words, put off your laziness and pursue, be hot, uh, have, uh, as it says, fervent in spirit, you know, have that hot streak uh, for the Lord. And of course, it is serving the Lord. That's where we have this kind of passion and where we uh, focus our attention. Now, there are a lot of people who would uh, say that um, this serving here is just, you know, I, I serve the Lord. And really what they're saying is I don't do a lot of bad things. But but they, they're not really pursuing serving the Lord, actively participating in the kingdom, bearing fruit. And in fact, if we look at this Greek word um, that we have rendered here in the New King James as fervent, or excuse me, serving, <laughs> it is to be a slave to, literally or figuratively, involuntary or voluntary, be in bondage. Do serve or to do service. The idea is that that um, we are really enslaved to the Lord. Now, now that's a good slavery, uh, believe it or not. Now, in our society, slavery is really looked down upon. It's a, a derogatory term, and no one would say they're a slave to anyone or to anything. Yet we have people who are a slave to. Alcohol. We have a. Uh, there are people who are a slave to cigarettes. They're a slave to some addiction. In other words, they're, they're a slave. No doubt, whether we want to admit it or not, we're a slave to what is good or to what is bad. Back up a few pas uh, passages or uh, pages. That is in Romans chapter six. And in Romans chapter 6 and verse 16, follow along with me. Romans 6 verse 16. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, and every one of us were, every one of us were given to the slavery of sin and the bondage of sin, held captive by sin, but God be think that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, the teaching, to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Am I a slave to sin or am I a slave to righteousness? Those are the only two options. There is no middle ground. In Mark chapter 10 and verse 21, then Jesus looked at him. This is the rich young ruler who came and approached Jesus asking, what must I do to inherit eternal life? It, it seems as though he's looking for this one thing he needed to do. And as you would find out in the story, he's not willing to do it. But that he can just go ahead and punch his card and done. What do I need to do? Some maybe fantastic thing. I'll do it, get it over with, and then I can go on about my life. It, it seems to me. I'm not certain that that was his attitude, but possibly. Then Jesus looked at him, loved him. You know, when God corrects us, it is truly out of love. He loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. Now you may be wondering, why would I even use this passage? I want to share this passage with you, Mark 10 verse 21, in regard to the rich young ruler, because you know what he was a slave to? His riches. His money. Possibly the freedom that it gave him. Possibly the... Uh, the confidence that he had. <clears throat> Maybe it was the luxuries that he was able to enjoy. You see, those are all contrary to taking up 
your cross. Now, no one wants to take up their cross, implying that you take up hardship, discomfort, that sacrifice is going to be involved. And so when we read here in regard to being a slave, we could, we could look at that in a whole lot of different aspects and, and how we can be enslaved to this addiction and that addiction and, and this luxury and that luxury. And it keeps us from being what we ought to be in the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This man went away disappointed. He went away with his head hung low not willing to give up what he had. He wasn't willing to take up his cross and follow Jesus. He wasn't willing to become a slave to the Lord. And there are many people who feel that way today. Oh, they'll give their life to Jesus, but they're still holding on to the steering wheel. They haven't given the Lord, complete control over their lives. And I want you to think into, take into consideration that this is something that we do daily. It is not something that we do on occasion. We are not Sunday morning Christians, in other words, and the rest of our time is up to us how we want to spend it. Again, we see in Luke 9 and verse 23, then he said to them, and of course this is Jesus, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. You see how we sacrifice ourselves. We give up ourselves. This is no longer my body. It's no longer my spirit. It's no longer my soul. It's no longer I who direct my life. We deny ourselves. We suppress our own wants, desires, and so on. We say, Lord willing." We say, thy will be done. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Am I following the Lord? Am I serving the Lord in every aspect of my life? Individually, as a husband, as a father, as a laborer in the kingdom, as, as a, a servant to those around me, within my, my own nucleus, but even beyond. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I spreading the gospel? Am I talking to others? Am I truly confessing? Do I have a life of confession in regard to who is my master? Who I am a slave to? To whom I serve? Is that my mentality or am I still just, hey, I'm my own person? No, not if I'm a true servant of the Lord. Not if I'm really serving the Lord. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. It says daily. I do this daily. How often do you eat? Make a correlation here you know, in the model prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. How often do you eat? Probably every day. You may fast on occasion, but you eat every day. Am I serving the Lord every day or do I take a vacation from Him from time to time? Do I just kind of lay my armor down? Do, 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 do I get tired? Or, going back to this the, the concepts here in verse 11, not lagging in diligence, fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. I'm only here for a little while, so I'm going to keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. And find only rest in the Lord. And, but our service to Him is always, it's continual. I'm a slave to him, a slave to righteousness, but gladly so, because he's given us life, life in him and life more abundantly.